Welcome to Talk and Waukesha, the podcast where every conversation springs to life. I'm Andrew Nafke. And I'm Anthony Terrell. And we're your hosts for today's journey into the heart of Waukesha. Whether you're a local or just passing through, join us as we explore the stories, people, and hidden gems that make Waukesha truly special. From community events to personal anecdotes, we're here to bring you the pulse of our vibrant town. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and let's dive into another episode of Talk and Waukesha. Where every conversation springs to life. Welcome back to another episode of Talk and Waukesha. Today here we're, we're with Alicia Helvenslaben. Did I say that correctly? You did. Yes. <laughs> uh, she is the alder person or the council member for District 11, which is all of downtown Waukesha proper. Um, she is also currently the uh, president of the council and is on the Ordinance and License Board, Public Library Board, and the Parade Memorial Commission. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Starting off kind of, we'll give, give you a nice you know, softball easy one. Uh <laughs> What are the primary responsibilities of a city council member for the city of Waukesha? Sure. So um, the biggest thing uh, for being a member of the city council is to make sure that you're properly representing your constituents. Mm -hmm. And whether that means making the right decisions at council meetings and at committee meetings, or if that means uh, answering phone calls and writing emails and things like that, just to make sure that you're existing and accessible for your constituents Mm -hmm. and making sure that what they have to say is heard um, and processed and, and taken into consideration when making decisions that are important to the city. Do you get a lot of phone calls and emails? Um, a pretty decent amount. I think that, uh, you know, people care about Mm -hmm. a variety of things that impact them and impact the city that sometimes I can help them with. Sometimes I can't when I can, I absolutely love it. When I can't, I try to make sure that I give them some sort of an answer so they know what their potential next steps are. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then what kind of additional then responsibilities come with being the council president then? Um, so the, the main thing is that I take over uh, if, they're, if the mayor is unavailable. So uh, recently the mayor was out of town. Um, well, he wasn't out of town. He was actually representing us uh, for a budget task force meeting. So I shouldn't say out of town so much as unavailable that evening. So I ran the council meeting at that point. Um, and then, yeah, whenever one of us is out of town, we just make sure that we're letting everyone know so that if there's an issue that we know what to do in mm-hmm. case something were to happen, God forbid, we hope not, but yeah. just in case. Yeah. So then can you kind of describe like a typical day in the life as a city council member? I know you kind of went into the little bits of it with like answering emails, helping phone calls and stuff like that for citizens, but I guess what more might there be or kind of the everyday Sure. So I think one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about the city council members, at least here in Waukesha, is that uh, we, for the most part, most of us have daytime jobs. Mm -hmm. So my day typically is get up in the morning and go to my day job. Uh, And then it's usually after work that I'm um, working on things that constituents have called me about, emailed me about, going to committee meetings, going to council meetings and things like that. It also kind of involves some fun things occasionally, Mm -hmm. ribbon cuttings, um, the Celebrate Waukesha breakfast is always a a delight. So yeah, it just kind of depends on the day, but... The most, for the most part, my the beginning of my day probably looks like most people's day. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're still just a normal person. Like I everyone. am just a normal person. <laughs> yeah, so that's, I think it's one of the nice things about our council is we have a lot. You know, everyone's got a day job. I think we only have one, one retiree. I think. I think so. I think Eric's the only retiree. But it's still, everyone's got such a diverse background, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got white collar job, blue collar job, every, every sort of career path basically so there's a lot of experience you know business owners previous business owners it's makes it it makes it the conversations interesting yeah Yeah, and I think it's nice to see different perspectives because I can come at something from one background and then I hear my other you know fellow council members saying different things and coming at it from a different angle and I Mm -hmm. think that 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 makes our council really great yeah definitely so what inspired you to run for the city council? And then what are some of the key milestones of your journey so far as as a council member? Sure. So I've always been interested in politics, even when I was a little kid. Um, and so, you know, it was kind of one of those things that maybe is, was in the back of my mind. Maybe someday I'll run for something. Uh, I saw an opportunity uh, as we were kind of dealing with COVID and, and uh, recognizing that I maybe had the time to actually put thought into whether or not I would want to run. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was talking to a lot of people in the community, uh, potential constituents that uh, encouraged me to run. They, They said that 
they didn't like um, the way that things were and that they wanted somebody that they knew would listen to them. And they knew I was already listening to them mm-hmm. before I was elected um, and trying to help them as much as I could. So I thought, well, maybe I would be the best person to, to represent my, my friends, my neighbors. So I went for it. Um, and, and thankfully I was elected thanks to my constituents. Thank you all for anyone who's listening. Um, but yeah, since then there's been so much, we have done a lot as a city. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things that we've done is the parade memorials. Uh, I know that we're not quite done yet with Mm -hmm. the, with the larger of the two, but just seeing the way that the community came together after the parade to support the victims, but then also to support the, the memorial itself Mm -hmm. to really make sure that we could see that to fruition. Uh, one of my favorite parts about that is seeing all of the tiles that people made. Uh, I made one myself, so we can look for that when uh, when it's all completed. But I really think it was such a great idea. Um, Carmen came up with such a creative way to involve the whole community that I really, really loved. And it was another way for us to raise money as well. Uh, so I, I really look forward to seeing the completed memorial in this this November. Yeah, that'll look that'll look really neat. And I'd- I think we just finally wrapped up with the last tile project event, but yeah, that was on Friday. Yeah, another hundred some, I think, or close to a hundred more tiles being added to the list. So yeah, that'll be that'll be really neat to see everything kind of come together and see everyone's art and their memorials and their dedications all on one wall. So that'll be yeah. I think it's I don't remember when in November twenty first, twenty second, something like that. I think it's the twenty first. Yeah, and it was the twenty something. Yeah, it's It's an early twenty. Early twenty. Check the website for that one. Yes. Um, so, I mean, you were saying how, to you were a resident and then wanted to get more involved. So, I guess if there is any other resident out there now, maybe they're listening, how or what ways can they get involved, either just in city governance or just the decision-making processes? Sure. So, I think, number one, if you have an opinion, make sure that it's known. Uh, reach out to your older person, whether it's me or one of my 14 colleagues, um, that, you know, Call us, email us, um, all of our information is right there on the city website. In addition to that, you can always come to a council meeting or to a committee meeting and make your thoughts known there. I encourage that if you have something really specific that's on the agenda, it's a great time to make your voice heard by multiple people all at once. If you're not able to make those meetings, you can also always send those thoughts in so they can be read into the record. Uh, so I definitely encourage that. But if you're looking for more, um, we do have the the local government academy um, that is available. Uh, and you know what? If you really think that you want something different, you should run for office. Mm-hmm. I definitely encourage folks to to look into that, whether it's you know city council or something else. There are plenty of ways to get involved. Yeah. Um, we also have appointments for various boards and committees um, for citizens to get involved. So uh, when there are openings or even if they aren't, if you want, if you're interested, definitely make that interest known so that you can be considered for an appointment. And those appointments are happening year round. Um, Mm -hmm. To find more about when the the meetings are, you can go to waukesha-wi.gov slash meetings. Um, There's one other thing. Oh, if you wanted to run, um, if you go through the, on the city's website underneath government to the uh, clerk treasurer's page, Um, You should be able to find more information about uh, running for office there as well. Uh, We talked a little bit about, you know, decision making and, you know, getting involved. How do you approach decision making when it comes to making decisions for boards, commissions, and even uh, the council? Yeah, so the first thing I'm thinking about is my constituents. Mm -hmm. So uh, you had mentioned I have the majority of downtown. uh, So that's a little bit different than some of the other areas in the city. And so I try to take that into account. But I also recognize that what I do reflects on the whole city. Uh, It's going to affect everyone in the city no matter what the decisions are. So I have to take that into account too Mm -hmm. um, and really balance that out. And I know that while... I have a constituency that elected me that I'm really here to look out for the best interests of the city and everyone who lives here. Um, and so that's kind of the, the other part of that. I definitely, if I get uh, information, if I get emails or calls about a specific issue, I make sure that I take that into account, do some additional research on my own as well. 
Looking at city staff recommendations is really helpful. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a reason that we have city staff. Thank you both. (laughs) Um, You guys are the experts where maybe some of the council members are not. You definitely know things that I do not know. And this is your day job. So, you know, I mentioned that I have a day job and most of the rest of the council members do. Um, But this is your day job. This is what you do every day, all day. Uh, So you're going to be an expert. And so I take that um, into account as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And just, yeah, overall, trying to to balance all of those things to, to find what is the best decision that's going to best help the whole community. Do you find it challenging that your your district is kind of in one of those unique situations where you have people who are just leaving home for the first time, you know, single single member households, multi well, not, say, not multifamily, but you know, established family households. You also have a lot of senior living um, locations as well. Does that throw a wrench or cause some trickiness when it comes to trying to you know voice your con- con- constituency? Um, I don't think so, actually. Uh... We all live in the same area. So Mm -hmm. while we might exist in that area slightly differently, we all live in that downtown area Mm -hmm. or slightly adjacent to it. Um, You know, basically everyone in my district, um, you know, barring any potential disabilities, can probably walk to Main Street. Um, So with that said, I think that the concerns that citizens have are um, probably across the board pretty similar, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the challenges, concerns, the praise as well. Yeah. Not not every call is a bad one. <laughs> um, and so I think that um, people recognize that. And yeah, I would say I can get the same type of a call from, yeah, a younger single person living alone. I can get a very similar call um, from, you know, a senior who's living in an assisted living facility, mm-hmm. uh, right down to, like you said, you know, a full family with a full house. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, these these are things that are, a lot of things are universal. They aren't specific to one type of constituency. Yeah. So what do you think are some of the biggest challenges cur- currently facing our city, and how is the city council addressing them? Yeah, so I think um, one of the things that I um, have heard a lot about, and I'm sure that we've seen a lot of it in the news, and and just overall, this seems to be kind of top of the mind. Uh, And I had mentioned that the the mayor was unavailable uh, a couple months ago because he needed to be at the budget task force meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that is one of the biggest challenges that we're facing right now. Um, And that's to say it's a challenge and not a crisis. And I think that's because we are doing a very good job of getting ahead of things before it becomes a crisis. Uh, I think that our our relatively new city administrator, Tony Brown, is doing an amazing job of working with uh, city staff, especially directors, to see okay, what can we do about budgets to address these issues? Where can we get creative about different streams of revenue and things like that? Mm -hmm. Um, But the biggest thing that I'd like to see is um, even more improvement on the shared revenue. Um, I think that would be the best thing uh, for us, (laughs) for for people in Waukesha. Um, So if you're concerned about this, I would encourage anybody listening to reach out to their legislators and let them know that uh, Waukesha didn't get as good of a deal as maybe we should have, Mm -hmm. uh, and and to re-examine that shared revenue. Yeah. And if you want a little more information, I think we talked about it with Tony Brown, and I think we touched on it a little bit when we talked with Jennifer Andrews as well of shared revenue from the state and Waukesha being a very mature, developed city. And if you want to learn more, feel free to reach out to us. I mean, we're, we're more than happy to help explain this. And I guess when you say reach out to your your representatives, you're talking more state level. State level, yes. The yeah. the city council cannot do anything about that, unfortunately. Not Our hands too, are tied. Not too much. We can, we can talk to the mayor, but, you know. Right. So if you're wondering, you know, why did this happen or why did that happen and mm-hmm. it's something related to the budget, Call your legislator. Yeah, we're also <laughs> not your wondering. council yeah, member. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have the same questions as you, and we just, you know, it seems like we'll have the avenues to talk to better people, but you know, we only have slightly more pull to their ear. Yes. So let's go into a couple more fun questions after that delightfully heavier question. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so, what would you say is the most adventurous thing that you've ever done, and would you do it again? Um, I know this is going to sound probably pretty lame, but I think I'm also probably a pretty lame person. Uh, But one of the most adventurous things I did at the time, so I wouldn't say that this would still be adventurous, but I was going to be studying abroad in Germany when I was in college, so I was 20 years old. 
and got on a plane for an international flight. I had never left the country before that. Um, Got on a plane by myself, then got on a train by myself and got myself basically all the way to my dorm with, you know, 300 euro in my pocket ready to to pay for that dorm when I got there, hoping everything would work out. Um, So yeah, when I think about it now, I'm like, gosh, I was 20 years old and I did all of that on my own. Like, Wow. I, you know, so I, it was great. I would definitely go to Germany again or mm-hmm. any other country. I, I like I like traveling when I can. Pretty busy with stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, if I can get somewhere, I would love to do it again. Um, go visit my friends who are still there. So that would be great. Where in Germany did you go? Um, I was sitting in Erfurt, which is um, if you take the fast train, it's about an hour and a half to two hours um, east of Frankfurt. Okay. So it was in the old East Germany, but I was not there when it was East Germany. It was 20 years later. Yeah. It always fascinates me, too, just European countries, how small they are compared. Mm-hmm. Where, like, you're in Texas. You drive, uh, you take a train, you do whatever, five, six hours, you're still in Texas. Well, it's, the <laughs> yeah. con- it's the concept of states that is where it's, it's, yeah. each state is its own country. Its own country. In, in the, yeah. In the- glimpse of the entire world yes mm-hmm. exactly yeah. yeah i i would just hop on a train and go anywhere like i had i had class only monday through wednesday it just sort of worked out that way with my schedule mm-hmm. so thursday friday saturday sunday i would just hop on a train and go somewhere stay in a hostel with no real mm-hmm. plan thinking about that now again i'm just like how did i do this <laughs> I was 20 years old what was i thinking uh i had friends um so i wasn't by myself by myself yeah. but yeah just, but yeah just just be having that and like okay i'm gonna go get lost somewhere today you know i'll yeah. roughly know how i'll get back but exactly yeah. but then especially doing that in another country where yeah. they might not even speak the same language right, right. <laughs> how, how was your german at the time um it was okay um uh, but their english is way better than my german will ever be oh perfect oh, okay so, it works it out it still sounds i mean you, you underplayed it as being adventurous but i think that's very adventurous to yeah. love I'm gonna go over there. I have I have a plan. Beyond that plan, who knows? Mm-hmm. It seems like that's a common theme that's come from these podcasts. Is everyone's kind of adventurous thing is going to another country and getting lost. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what yeah. I'm noticing. Yeah, I, I've got a goal to do in this country, and what I'm going to do is travel. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So next, if you could become an expert in any skill or hobby, what would it be and why? I think I would love to learn how to sew. Because I feel like when I rip my pants or something and I can't, I'm like, oh, now what do I do? I don't know what to do with this. So I have mm-hmm. no idea how to sew. I always wanted to learn, just kind of never got around to it as a kid. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I think if I, I don't know if I need to be an expert per se, but I would love to be better at it. <laughs> you want like hand stitching or do you like using machine or both or all? I would, I guess I would just like to be able to fix my clothes if I rip something. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I think the most I can do is fix a hole in my pocket, but then that's about it. Right. Or, you know, hem some pants. I'm very short, so I'd like to be able to hem pants if I like these and they're too long. Now I just put them back on the rack, but I could say, oh, no, I'll just hem them. No problem. Mm-hmm. I, c- I can utilitarianly sew things back together where it's like, okay, we will mend this hole temporarily until new pair shows up. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> or until, you know, until further holes open up and then, yeah. it's, all right, these are gone. I can do a button. That's about it. That's why I can't I, even no, do that, though. No, I don't trust my my handiwork for for <laughs> sewing long enough. What's the most unusual or interesting job that you've ever had? Hmm, I would probably say working for the bookkeeper when I was in high school. Uh, what what we did is what a lot of students probably are aware that it must happen, but the logistics of that happening is maybe not clear. Mm -hmm. Uh, So at the end of the school year, your books are all collected and stacked up. And after the school year is over, there are students who come in and collect all those books and inventory all of them. That's why there are those numbers in there. Makes sense. And then at the beginning of the school year, we get a, a number of how many books are needed for each class in each classroom. And we bring them and, and drop them off. And we had these like big carts that we moved everything around. And I'm like, this is one of those things, right? That every student mm-hmm. has to grab their textbook at the beginning of the year and turn it in at the end. But they don't really know what happens in the in between. And so. Right. You just kind of assume, oh, it just probably collected dust on the shelf in the room mm-hmm. and right. then never left. And... Right. Like, why do we have to sign, you know, our name? And 
we keep track of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So as and long it's as kind of cool at in. some point too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I got to see like all these different parts of the school that you wouldn't normally see, you know, mm-hmm. just different storage closets and things that are always locked, but somehow <laughs> wide open in the middle of summer and mm-hmm. hang out with the teachers who are cleaning up their classrooms. So there were a lot of kind of other aspects to the job that were a lot of fun. And it seems like it's a super relevant topic at the time, too, because, I mean, I I just started seeing on Instagram all these teachers like, oh, we have to go back to school now and, you know, get dressed and wear normal clothes and dress up. (laughs) Like, (laughs) yep, uh, summer's almost over in a a weird way. But I think I would end up seeing some of the students like that, especially in high school when I was in marching band, because we were then kind of there towards Mm -hmm. the end of the summer before school had started. So I would definitely see those students moving those carts. And I'm Mm -hmm. just thinking they're just moving the carts. They're not actually organizing the books and making sure oh, i was yeah. thinking the teachers were doing that mm-hmm. we were in this like huge back room with all of these books and making sure they were sorted into the right place because yeah how do you get 30 textbooks to each class mm-hmm. or, right. you know also sounds like a workout too oh my gosh it was a great workout yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so what is something about yourself that most people might not know um oh my goodness i don't know i feel like i'm usually a pretty open book so uh, well, maybe that's what it is. I really enjoy reading. I'm part of a book club. Um, so I like, I enjoy reading for fun, not just reading our packets before our council mm-hmm. meetings and everything. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I actually really enjoy reading. I like reading just about every kind of book. So I'll read, you know, a paranormal romance, but I'll also read, you know, some not nonfiction book about, you know, the Gilded Age. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all over the board. And my book club is too, which is really fun because it exposes me to different types of books. So, yeah. Kind of piggybacking off that, what book, movie, or TV show, and I'll even go with and or TV show, are you currently enjoying? Um, well, I mean, what did I watch last night? It was definitely House of the Dragon, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dragon Tales is on. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually um, read all of the books that were out. Mm-hmm. So there, I know the series is not completed, but I really liked the Song of Ice and Fire series from George R. R. Martin. Uh, and I watched all of Game of Thrones and I was very disappointed in the final season like everyone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was, I was wary when they said, oh, we've got a new series. I was curious. And House of the Dragon has been really great. And last night's episode did not disappoint. No spoilers. No, no, no that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still stuck on the first season because, you know, like, oh, we need to ditch HBO Max for a year and then come back to it again. That's so. fair. I'm also a fan of starting it much later because we watched Game of Thrones two years after it finished and just watched through everything. So there's no oh, disappointment wow. of that waiting time. So it still was weird, but it's nice to be able to binge stuff. But at the same time, the internet is dark and full of spoilers. Oh, hundred percent. I knew I knew a lot of the 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 the, the dark uh, the dark things that happened because of the internet. Yeah, and there's also just like a magic too of uh, watching it as the world is watching it too mm-hmm. and seeing everyone oh, totally. talk about it. I think there was even like a Instagram reel that I had seen where when Game of Thrones was coming out, someone was in like New York looking up at this apartment building and you could see all the windows were in sync with their lighting because they were all watching Game of Thrones. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's cool. awesome. I think one of my favorite things when Game of Thrones was on was um, the reaction reels and, and videos because it would be people like me who had read the books and knew what was coming mm-hmm. and then a partner or friend or whoever that had not read the books. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're standing in the corner like filming their friend <laughs> yeah. and what, you know, I know what's coming. I, I can hear the music, the mm-hmm. Reigns of Castamere mm-hmm. are playing. So, yeah, that was, I really enjoyed those, especially as a book reader. So Good. And then what, what, uh, what books are you currently enjoying? Um, right now I am reading, um, I'm reading one of the books in the Hades and Persephone series. Um, so that is, uh, it's a romance, but it's based on the Hades and Persephone mythology, Mm -hmm. uh, but it's set in modern times. So like she, she works for a newspaper and he owns a club and, you know, so it's kind of, it's kind of odd, uh, Hmm. but it's interesting. It's really, um, it's a pretty good book. And then, um, my book club book. It's called Do Your Worst. I believe it's kind of a cozy romance um, about an archaeologist and a curse breaker. Hmm. Yeah. It's an interesting combo. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, obviously you're on the the library board. Are you getting these books from the library? Um, Yeah. So I get most of my books from the library. um, Mm -hmm. And I actually do most of them through Libby or Hoopla Mm -hmm. uh, because I prefer to read electronic books because then they're always with me. You Mm -hmm. know, some of these books these days are really thick and they don't fit in my purse. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) if I have them on my phone, it's a lot easier. 
I, say, I, I know I'm a younger guy, but I tried reading a, a thicker book on an airplane. And just based on how big I am on being on a plane, I couldn't read it because it was too close to my face. So it's nice with, with like Kindles and stuff. I can put it further away from my face because I don't have to worry about, you know, a thousand page book being too close. And then I can also change the font size a little bit too. And Which is That's nice. always fantastic. You change the background and all mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. It's got some green, some green features to it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I'm over here with audiobooks because I'm dyslexic. So it's very hard for me yeah. to read. <laughs> I do both actually. Yeah. So the Hades and Persephone series, I'm reading that one audiobook. And then the other one I'm reading on my Kindle. So okay. I usually have two books going at a time. Okay. That's nice. Now, since you both do audiobooks, do you find it harder to enjoy a book that has a bad storyteller? Like the narrator? The narrator, yeah. Uh, yeah, it defi- that definitely can make or break it. Um, I know some of the books that I have read recently, um, so one of the ones was uh, the sequel to Ready Player One, Ready Player Two. It was read by Will Wheaton, so mm-hmm. he's also a nerd too. Mm-hmm. So it, you could tell he's got the enthusiasm while reading it as well, so that usually helps. Mm-hmm. But there are ones where the people are very just, I'm reading this for the paycheck. Right. Mm-hmm. And yep. it's like, oh, okay, this isn't as exciting. Yeah, it definitely makes it harder to get through the book. Mm-hmm. All right. So what job, other than your current job, would you love to try? You know, when I was a kid, I really wanted to be a lawyer. Um, And then, you know, I was finishing up college and going to law school just was not the right thing for me. And then I, you know, got a different job and was doing that. That kind of followed another job and another job. And now I've been with the company that I'm with for eight and a half years. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's ever going to happen, but it was always kind of one of those things in the back of my head. But then again, that's what I said about running for office, and here I am. Yeah. So who knows? If you could time travel, would you go to the past or the future? And then the, the addendum we've always started adding is, if, if for either option, how far in the future or how far in the past? So the correct answer is to go to the future (laughs) Um, because we know like, you know, diseases and medical science, that alone should keep you out of the past. But uh, you asked a history major, so I'm going to have to go with the past. (laughs) Um, I'm glad you came back around for that one. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, no, I I love, I love history. I don't even know if I could pick an era because I am so interested in so many of them. Mm -hmm. Um. I think if I wanted to be a fly on the wall, maybe any time during the Tudor era. I, mm-hmm. I really love the whole Tudor era, so not just Henry VIII, the whole thing, starting with Henry VII, straight through to Elizabeth. Um, I think it's fascinating. Um, you know, I think that Bloody Mary got a bad rap because her dad was way worse, and you know, so I would just, I would love to see that, and also um, because it was kind of one of those first times that women were able to really seize power. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, lo- I would love to see how that really played out and what was going on behind the scenes that we don't necessarily know from the history books. Yeah. yeah. So I struggle with Eliz- not Elizabethan, let's try this again, England eras compared to the rest of the world. How does that compare to like Catherine the Great? And is that pre or post Catherine? So Catherine the Great would be later. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're talking, um, you know, more of the 1500s. Okay. Catherine the Great is more of the 1700s. Um, But kudos to Catherine the Great for Mm -hmm. getting the smallpox inoculation situation going because, yeah, I think that was one of the best things that she did in her reign. I didn't know if that was a test or not. It it wasn't. (laughs) You could have said anything and I would have believed you. Honestly, (laughs) if my wife listens to this episode, she's going to be strongly disappointed that I don't remember when the tutors are. (laughs) All right. So kind of on the same idea of time travel... If you could go back in time and tell your younger self some words of advice, what would you say? Uh, I would probably say be confident in yourself, that things are going to get better. I was a pretty nerdy kid. I mean, I guess I'm probably still a nerdy adult, but I think it's more acceptable if you're an adult. Mm-hmm. In a um, weird way, yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think because when you're an adult, you can pick what you do, who you mm-hmm. spend your time with. When you're a kid, you're stuck with the people who are at school with you. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I was kind of an odd kid. I read a lot and, um, you know, was really excited about history in a weird way. And uh, so I think I would just say, 
go for it. Be confident. Be who you are. Mm-hmm. When you know when you're older, it's going to be so much better for you. Because I think I bet a lot of people would say that to their younger selves, right? Yeah. Like a lot of people had down moments when they're younger, right? With bullies and and other things, I'm sure. So I think that's probably good advice for most of us to give to ourselves: is yeah, to be more mm-hmm. confident and really believe in ourselves. Just embrace, yeah, embrace who you are. You don't have to change yourself for anyone else. Just, exactly. If you want to be weird, be weird. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thrilled being weird as a kid. Like, I mean, we, we, we prided ourselves on having a little nerdy corner outside the library and to a point where like people would come by and ask us for homework help. It's like, yeah, we know where the nerds are because they're right there next mm-hmm. to the library. Right, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. As long as you got your people to go with, then it makes it a lot easier. It and, does. I mean, me, sure. I, I was a band geek, so I had the other band geeks and yep. it went well. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, forensics and debate team. We all hung out together. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So going back to Waukesha a little bit more. Um, it's kind of going to be a, a tricky one of asking you like almost who your favorite child would be, but what's your favorite thing about Waukesha as a whole? And then what's your favorite thing about downtown Waukesha? Yeah, I had, I had to think about this one. I've made notes. So I got to find it. Okay. <laughs> um, so one of my favorite things about the whole city um, is really the sense of community, the sense of belonging. Mm-hmm. I think that the parade tragedy reminded us of something that we already knew and showed the world something great about Waukesha. And Mm -hmm. that is the ability to truly come together. I know that, you know, we talk a lot and we hear a lot from the media about how divisive everything is nowadays. And I don't feel that way in Waukesha. I'll be perfectly honest. I don't feel that way about my fellow council members. I don't feel that way when I'm out and about in the community. I feel like when I'm having a conversation, even if there's something where I might disagree with somebody, um, it's still really civil and we Mm -hmm. can still hug and and say goodbye in a friendly way. And I love that about Waukesha. I think that it's really unique. I don't know if that's something that exists everywhere, but it's definitely something that exists here. And when I uh, made the decision to move here permanently, that that was definitely something that was in the back of my mind. And that was over a decade ago at this point. So had nothing to do with the parade. I know we we talk a lot about it in the wake of the parade tragedy, but um, I think it's something that's always been here. Um, and I I'm hope I hope it's here to stay forever. Yeah, I, actually, as you were describing it, like the way the way my mindset thought about like how you're talking about the community is we're like stereotypically midwestern yeah it's, yeah it's everyone's like, really nice here yeah, everyone's yeah, right? <laughs> friendly you know you know yes everyone's gonna have their political divides and their their sports teams divides and everything but you know it's still like you can talk with anyone and as long as they're not having a bad day or they really just need to kind of have a you know be alone everyone's cheery pretty happy and right mm-hmm. you know. even when you have that lone bears fan sitting at mainstream trying to watch the game mm-hmm. you're like Okay, I'm going to give you some side eye, but I'm not. I'm yeah. not going to yell at you. I get teased plenty for being a Bears fan already. So you know. I, I knew I might have been mentioning. I, I kind of kind of guess that I'm not a mainstream I though. I, I sit quietly at home and just smile. Uh, what is the most interesting or surprising fact about the city that you've learned about? Um, I think one of my favorite interesting facts about the city is our really strong suffragette history. Um, As we were uh, kind of coming into the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, uh, the Historical Museum had this really great uh, exhibit, I guess, uh, showcasing the the suffragette history here in Waukesha. So not just Wisconsin, but here in Waukesha, Mm -hmm. uh, to the point where we have a park named after a famous suffragette, Mm -hmm. um, Theodore Eumann's park uh Mm -hmm. which is in my district actually Mm -hmm. uh and and a wonderful little park uh it's beautiful and it's right by the avalon if people aren't sure where it is and she's also buried at prairie home cemetery yes yes so i i really love that uh i i love obviously i love women in politics so uh maybe i'm a little biased but i just i think that that's fascinating that that you know little old waukesha right we have this amazing history there yeah Mm -hmm. there's a lot a lot of Kind of not not necessarily hidden history, but um, little jewels of history that that pop up every now and then that I I keep seeing and finding. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows us for Les Paul. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, everybody knows the Spring City era, right? These are things that we're kind of constantly reminded of. But there's those other little things, Mm -hmm. those jewels of history that, uh, yeah, you're not necessarily hidden. Uh, They're there in plain sight, right? We have a park, Mm -hmm. but uh, not something necessarily everybody's always constantly reminded of mm-hmm. and that's something we'd even talked about too is is trying to do a little little video series on what are these parks named after what's the you know who's the person behind the name like i love that idea I think who's shootsy who's cutler and just mm-hmm. kind of 
digging a little bit more into that and hopefully little little bite-sized pieces of, of history from there. Yeah. I did the ghost tours and you learn a lot from those. They mm-hmm. they have a pretty good like sense of history, so that's really fascinating. Cheesy as they may be, they the little history bits you learn from them are always very fun. cheesy, but absolutely wonderful. <laughs> the 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 man who hosts them apparently really likes my cat because he sometimes runs by my house and sees my cat in the window. I mean, it makes sense. A guy liking a black cat, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so who would you say has been the biggest mentor uh, or influence for your career? Um, this is probably going to sound so cliche, uh, but I would say number one is my mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother has been such a great influence on me. She's been such a great motivator. She's the one that when I'm not sure of myself, I'll call her and she's like, I don't know why you're not sure of yourself. You're you're going to be great at this or that, the other thing. Uh, you know, I called her when I was going to ask for a promotion from my boss. And she's like, yeah, go for it. You should totally do it. 20 minutes later, I'm like, yeah, my boss is down for this. So, you know, she's been there from the beginning. Uh, She's always really taken care of me and and made sure that I felt confident in everything that I was doing. Um, But I would probably follow that up with um, my debate coach from high school, uh, Adam Jacoby. And I hope that he hears this at some point, but uh, he was such a great influence on helping me to become a better speaker, more confident speaker, to make sure that when I am speaking, it's well researched and well thought out. Mm -hmm. So I, I really appreciate all of the, the advice and help that he gave, whether it was in debate and forensics practice or in the theater classes that I was taking with him. Um, he was just a really great influence. And I know that he's done so much uh, across the state for a lot of students. And so I'm guessing that I'm not the only one in, in the state of Wisconsin that would say that. That's a fantastic combination of debate and theater. Yeah. Because really, really, a lot of debate and forensics does come down to I mean, short of short of like throwing a little bit more psychology with it, like that would be like the perfect of like theater and psychology of how do you get your point across, get it up across well, mm-hmm. and then also and then just speaking just too yeah. in front and just being able to yeah carry that confidently. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I d- I did not do the more theatrical type categories. I did more of the current events and, mm-hmm. and those mm-hmm. sorts of things. But, um, you know, I enjoyed the theater classes. Nonetheless, it was good exercise. Some of the, like, improv-type exercises mm-hmm. are always fun, I think, for anyone. So. Yeah, I think, I think improv is one thing that everyone could use, at least one class in, of just just the, you know, just the understanding the yes and, and that's the, it's almost a good mentality of life of, like, don't just tell people no. You can say yes, but, but you can't say no, but. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Um, and, you know, just being <clears throat> silly. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that sometimes we can take ourselves too seriously. And so to have that little reprieve in the middle of the day to go and, and yeah, just be silly with other students. And mm-hmm. we all have to be silly at the same time. So no one looks yeah. extra silly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get over a little bit of the awkwardness, get beyond mm-hmm. the that, that, that hump of like, I don't want to do this because I don't want to look stupid. Like everyone's going to look stupid in front of each other. And exactly. if everyone looks stupid, no one looks stupid. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So then maybe from one of those mentors, too, that you'd mentioned, was there any, you have a best piece of advice that you ever received? I know that I kind of said this is what I would tell myself uh, when I was younger, but I, I think that my mom telling me that things would be better when I'm an adult, she's like, you are building all of this up so that you can be amazing when you're an adult. And I think that that really stuck with me. Um, because, you know, everyone has those challenging moments in middle school, high school, college, Mm -hmm. maybe even after college when you're kind of struggling, you're in your early 20s and you're just trying to figure everything out. My mom kept telling me, she's like, there's more to come. Things will be better. Mm -hmm. Things are going to be amazing. You're going to do great things. And just have somebody that was there that was believing in me and telling me something. Um, And then, you know, as I got older, I realized that is true. Things, things do get better. And, I think in everyone's life, there are ups and downs, and that's okay too. But um, I think knowing that things did eventually get better, and and I really found my place in the world, um, even now, if there is a little bit of a stumble, I feel like it's okay. This is just a little dip. We're going to go right back up again. It's going to be fine. Uh, So that advice has really stayed with me to help me through times that I think we've all gone through where there's maybe just that little dip. Yeah, I think, I mean... The thing I've, I've more and more recently realized is that even though it's a little dip, it may take a month, it may take two months, 
but it's still only like a little, a small portion of your life is is going through a little bit of hardship, and then right, you'll bounce back at some point and exactly keep ten years back later, up. it will be a nothing burger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I think it's time for rapid fire questions. Rapid fire questions. All right. Okay. Nothing is going to be too controversial or too crazy or too anything. So well, there's there's one that's always controversial. There's one. Well, we'll see. I don't know which one it is, but there's always one. <laughs> there's always one. <laughs> <laughs> so so no pressure on any of these. All right. Are you an early bird or night owl? I would probably say night owl, but I don't sleep in super late. Okay. Fair enough. Coffee or tea? So I actually usually don't drink either. If I had to pick, I would say water. Okay. All right. That's a controversial one. There you go. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite season of the year? Uh, fall, hands oh. down. I'm ready for Walktober already. <laughs> uh, what did you go to comfort food? Pizza, 100%. Love it. Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's the go-to topping then? I love my sausage and pepperoni. Pretty okay. basic, but mm-hmm. always good. What's, what's your go-to walk shop pizza place? Ooh, okay. This well, is see, the yeah, this, this, <laughs> this is controversial. I would say if I'm bringing home a pizza to eat at home, mm-hmm. love Sal's. I think Sal's pizza is somehow like that perfect Midwestern square cut pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm downtown, I'm probably hitting Magellan's. Love those options. And if you're ready for a coma, then you go and get yourself a Ponza Yeah, I'll get it. Yeah. Well, that's not pizza. <laughs> yeah. But yes. Someone was telling me that a Ponza contains one brick of cheese per Ponza. And I believe it. I believe that it. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah. You say. 100%. I believe that. It's delicious coma food. Though. I know. And they're, and they're really cheap, actually. They're, yeah, they're, they're affordable. Yeah. They're like, it's almost inexcusable how yeah. cheap they are. Yeah. I was looking at it the other day and I was like, oh, these are only this price and i was like okay i need to get an- myself another one if right, you want to make right. it feel, feel a little better you go with the pepperoni and then you add in pineapple because they're at least in the fruit inside of it but that's also my controversy of you know pineapple does belong pineapple pizza. on pizza that would be a controversial yeah. question all right cats or dogs cats i have one beautiful cat her name is sylvie and i love her very much <laughs> favorite holiday uh halloween okay goes with goes the with fall. fall yep mm-hmm. uh, do you enjoy more savory or sweet uh, probably more savory. Favorite sport to watch and or play? Um, literally just the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a sports person, but I do love watching the Packers. Favorite ice cream flavor? Cookie dough. Good choice. Is there a specific variety of cookie dough? Uh, well, or, like or, or chocolate bread. chip cookie dough yeah, 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 bites. It's, a, it's not quite what I was going for. Um, You're thinking like cookies and cream kind of almost? Yeah, no, or... I was thinking like uh, brand. The brand was the word I could not come up with. Oh, brand. <laughs> well, okay. usually I go to Culver's and I get a concrete, mi- a concrete mixer with cookie dough bites in it. And I usually will do double because then I'm basically just eating cookie dough <laughs> with some fantastic. custard. <laughs> All right. I think that is the supreme answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you classify yourself as more an introvert or extrovert? Uh, I'm definitely an extrovert, but I think when I was younger, I was a little bit more of an introvert. Uh, what's your favorite type of music? I will listen to just about anything, um, even country. I'm not a big <laughs> fan of a lot of country, but there are, there are some good ones out there. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I just took my dad to see Shania Twain, uh, le- actually last Halloween, uh, for his 60th birthday, and we had a really great time. So yeah, I would listen to just about anything. I always like how when people give that answer, it's... I'll listen to almost anything, even country, incentivizing that, like, con- we all know country is the one that we don't like. <laughs> Country's its own thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of its own its own entity. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't say, like, I'm this huge country fan, but, uh, you know, enough that I went to a Shania T- Twain concert and had yeah. a really good time. So, yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite color? Uh, purple. I love cool. purple. Variety purple or just purple? Just purple. I have to ask him. It's like, I'm a, it's yeah. a graphic design thing. Yeah. <laughs> is it a, la- a is lavender? Is it or lavender? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I can give you the hex code if you that's, want. That's exactly what I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I have it somewhere. I'll give it to you later. And then candies. Do you prefer more fruity candies? you'd like more of the chocolate candies? I would say oh, it really depends on the time of day. I feel like if it's at night, I want chocolate. If it's during the day, I like the fruity candy. And that's usually because I feel like it lasts longer. So if I'm looking for that little boost, you mm-hmm. know, that like 2 p.m. slump when I'm just trying to get through the rest of the day and mm-hmm. I just need that little sugar rush, you know, it's a nice Jolly Rancher mm-hmm. is perfect for that. Sure. Or what about like Halloween? You get your, your basket full of candy. What's the first thing you're looking for? Probably Snickers bar. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. Would have been Butterfinger, but they changed that I recipe. It's it not real bad. good anymore. They, they tweaked it back a little bit again, so it's it's... 
passable, it's, but it was real bad before. Yeah, it's not what it was when I was younger. So that would have been my answer. But yeah, Snickers bar or Reese's peanut butter cups, mm-hmm. those are my mm-hmm. top two. Yeah. And then what candy are you throwing back then? Um, Almond Joy. Almond Joy? And by that, I mean I'm just handing it to my boyfriend because he loves them. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, we, we would always get home from Halloween and we'd take whatever candy we didn't want, put it back in the, the basket to hand out to kids and <laughs> there you go. send and it right back out the door. That. Well, yeah, you know, when you're sitting there, you know, you, you're eating some bef- while you're handing it out and you're mm-hmm. eating all the good ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two for the kids, three for me. Exactly, <laughs> <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> What advice would you give to someone who's interested in running for local office or getting involved in in public service? I think if you're interested, uh, you should reach out to your local representative, whether whether that's your council member, if you're thinking about a higher office, maybe talking to your legislators, uh, and just getting an idea of what it is that they do all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, Because... Maybe you might change your mind or maybe you get even more excited. But uh, if you do decide that you want to move forward, you're going to sound more informed on the campaign trail. If you mm-hmm. know it, know what it is that you're going to be doing. Right. Um, and they can also, you know, give you an idea of what it's going to be like. Right. Mm-hmm. So both on the campaign side and once you get elected, if you do. Yeah. And especially because every community is going to have a different community or a different council makeup. I mean, you've got Milwaukee Absolutely. where they've got full time ones. You've mm-hmm. got here where it's. I'm not saying it's not a time commitment. It's still it is a time commitment. Eight hours a week and of meetings potentially. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, and then you've got smaller communities where it's it may be a one three hour meeting every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, it definitely depends. I I know um, council members from different communities all over the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all have a slightly different experience in yeah. how things go. So then, last question: How can residents best support the efforts of the city council? Um, I think that. Hearing your opinions is really good, whether it's a positive or negative opinion about Mm -hmm. something. um, I think when there's a negative opinion, everyone is pretty quick to to make that call or send that email. But Mm -hmm. it's always nice to hear something positive if you're really enjoying something. That way we know we're doing a good job because if we don't hear anything, it's not always, we're not sure. Right. Uh, So if you are in support of something, you can write a letter about that too. You mm-hmm. can you can make a phone call about that too. Um, we want to hear from you. Uh, we want your feedback. So so please reach out to us um, or you know show up for public comment and say you're very much in favor of this this new ordinance that we're proposing or whatever it might mm-hmm. be. Um, because yeah, that's going to make a difference. We definitely do hear you. We listen to you. Um, and and just for some clarification, if you do come in for public comment, we're not allowed to talk to you. Mm-hmm. So don't feel like we're not hearing you. We absolutely are um if you want to have more of a direct dialogue then reach out to us directly we'd be more than happy to talk yeah. to you mm-hmm. i remember that being one of the conversations and it's it's, it's a tricky one i, I mean it's listening tough. to the entire conversation of can we talk to people during public comments like well they're only allowed so much time and then you don't right. want to monopolize too much of that public mm-hmm. comment time as right. well, so. well and we want to make sure that there's um, good feedback on both sides. Mm-hmm. So there's a reason why we have an agenda that's posted ahead of the meeting. And it's so that if people, if there's something on the agenda, people who have a vested interest can make their, their opinions known. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we just sort of start bringing random stuff up in public comment that can lead to a potentially one way conversation. Mm-hmm. And when that isn't necessarily what's best for the whole community. So right. when you're wondering why that is, uh, there is a good reason. And, <laughs> and it's not because we don't want to talk to you. We absolutely do. There are other ways to have a real dialogue. Yeah. I mean, even when there's, when the council chambers is full and there's tons of people that have things to say, it's, it can get overwhelming for everyone on both sides, but it's important for that. Everyone voices what they need to, what they want to see out of their, their community leaders. Absolutely. Well, that's all we've got for you today. Thank you so much for for being on Talk and Waukesha. Thank you. This was a really great experience, though. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for being here. And that's a wrap for another episode of Talk and Waukesha. We hope you enjoyed diving into the heart of our city with us. If you have a story to share or just want to say hello, reach out to us on social media at City of Waukesha on Facebook. We love hearing from our listeners. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review if you enjoyed the conversation. It really helps us spread the word. As always, thanks for tuning in to Talk in Waukesha, where every conversation springs to life.